Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in Hoi 4 TNO, The Last Days of Europe. I always forget whether that's the right name of the mod. But regardless, we're here playing as a sovereignty of Western Russia, looking at the economy tab. So I asked you guys yesterday, how to manage the economy of such a great nation, such as the sovereignty of Western Russia? So, a couple comments. I mean, the comments that were left yesterday were pretty awesome, especially linking to an old Reddit post about how to manage the economy. But basically, you want to increase your GDP faster than your debt levels, which sound like we're stuck in that little period of economic idea still in our modern day. And then also have high liquid reserves. So we have high liquid reserves, about 335 million, while our current debt is 15 million because we chose something earlier. So, However, to increase GDP, you might have to take on more debt, which isn't inherently a bad thing. We just have to grow GDP a little bit faster. But we also have Finland, which we're doing pretty well on, offers a ceasefire. So, though our soldiers have not managed to shatter the Finnish lines as we hoped, we are still making steady advances into the territory, perhaps fe fearing that they would not be able to hold us off for much longer, or simply not wanting to expend the blood and treasure to repel us, the Finns have offered us a truce. Truce. They propose to cede Onega to us in exchange for an end to the fighting. Shall we accept the treaties as they have offered it to us, or reject it and fight for greater gains? You know what? That's probably a bad idea. But I'm thinking, it sounds like fun if we just get, kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Uh, they still have quite a few divisions everywhere, but you know what? If we can get a Finnish puppet early on, that sounds awesome to me. Pretor's military industrial development. Uh, maybe... What what are we not improving right now? That's probably a good question to ask. What are we not improving? The army professionalism and nuclear stockpile, which we'll probably won't get nuclear stockpile. Spartan discipline? Oh, man. So, basically, anything that could help us with army professionalism. Um, add 200 million to the national debt. Ooh. Slightly increases, slightly increases GDP. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's, I think it's a good thing to always increase the number of civilian factories you have. I think that's probably a good thing to do. Uh, society development. Industry moderately increases GDP. It's not bad, not great. Uh, let's see. Research facilities, education, import heavy machinery. Slowly improve, increases GDP. Relief programs, agricultural stuff. Hire and foreign... Instructors. Ooh, army professionalism. That that one wouldn't be too bad to do. Because then we get that. A little more debt, you know, whatever. Less to political power, more army XP gain. That's actually probably the best thing to take right now. So that we can get that going. That's actually okay with me, even though I, I hate debt. I'll be honest, I hate debt so much. Ugh, terrible, I know. But we still have a good amount of liquid reserves, which we want to get more of. Annual revenue is pretty good. And we're doing pretty, pretty well. Pretty darn okay. We were struggling a little bit yesterday, but that's okay. Can you guys help out here, please? We do got to keep an eye on manpower, though. So it's not super high. Are we still trying to integrate Onega? Yes, we are. That's good. That's good. Hiring foreign instructors is probably the best thing we could do right now. But it seems like we're doing pretty well, which is awesome. Do we have a deficit of guns, maybe? Uh, howitzers. Beggar agricultural methods. Great. We replace basic mechanization with mass mechanization. So, more monthly population, more group of population factor, less consumer goods factories, more output. Just awesome. For this bread, we thank the... Uh, just remember to thank the emperor. Thank the Tsar. Another... Oh, a division. Good. Yeah, I hate seeing big numbers like that. Black market arms trades increases. If you want to let me know in the comments how this is going to affect me, I don't know. I don't like seeing black market arms trade increases. That seems kind of questionable to me. Uh, let's see, what can we do? Encourage returning people. We lose a little bit of money. Slightly increases GDP, more weekly manpower, and stability, which could be good. Revitalize stuff. Ooh, we lose stability for more war support, less consumer goods, factories, and more weekly manpower, or invest in constructing. Moderately increases GDP. That's not bad. I think I'm going to go with this, because we still get stability out of that, and we get some weekly manpower. So... Don't be too afraid to choose things that might help us out. And losses thus far, 29,000. I mean, we, we, we killed a lot of Finns. Like, that's a lot of guys, especially compared to us. Even though I'm not really trying with my army right now. Um, we're still doing a pretty good job, even though we could use more manpower still. Yeah, we're definitely going to need more manpower. Uh, yeah, I would like to send it over here, but we still need it. Here, I do have some coffee to drink as well. Good old coffee, because coffee is amazing. Some... White chocolate, strawberry, truffled coffee. Good stuff, good stuff. Oh man, look how weak they're getting. Oh, that's beautiful. 102,000 losses. Conditional surrender. Um, Driving them and the Russian puppets out of our Russian proper. 
Let's see, our terms will be simple. They hand over Murmansk, which is filled with Russian speakers and is our rightful territory. We will keep Onega, an illegitimate warlord state which should have never existed in the first place. And both agree to create the Karelian Autonomy, a joint protector of both Finland and West Russia, which will serve as a buffer state between us and them. Nope. I really want to see how far we can take this. Look, they're really just waiting until they die. Which is a little... Another division. Glorious. Which is insane. Uh, so we want to build this up, then we're going to build some more of this up. I think that'd be good. Yeah. All I know is spend, spend, spend. This increases again? Okay. Black market infiltration. Replace severe with... Oh, we need to get rid of this stuff. That does not look good. Hmm. Replace it. Yeah. We might need more than 50 political power. We need more stability to do that, though. Alright, well, let's see. Debt wise. You know, deficit, liquid reserves. That's not bad. Civilian spending offers unconditional surrender. Wonderful. I'm sorry, I should have waited for you guys if you wanted to read that. My, my apologies about that. Total expenditures, not bad. Annual revenues. Expenditures are going up, which I don't like. Hmm. But we need to spend so we can get some more stuff. Increases GDP. What, what gives me more stability? Infrastructure, more. That actually is not bad. That's really not bad to choose. Consolidate state resource corporations. I want more stability. Bonus for industry. Industrial expertise, that's not bad. Stability, 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 stability. No, I don't see it. Yeah, there we go. Ah, we're now at peace, which is good. Uh, it's probably good to lower this, just because it seems like a bad idea to have severe. Less factory output. Let's we'll see what happens. No, Russian victory in the Northern Wall. We've crushed the stubborn Finns. Great job, guys. So, now we shall come down here. And then do... Our sovereignty ensured. After years of toil and troubles, Vyadka has ascended to the ranks of a regional power. We started as nothing more than a group of white emigres, the few people so loyal to the ideals from before the October Revolution, heading to the front lines of the West Russian War evolved. Monarchist authority finally made its inevitable return to the nation, torn by war and chaos, as a final savior from the claws of extremism and totalitarianism. With the support of the true believers, whether they were prominent white politicians or simple peasants who helped their cause, we have managed to achieve dominance in West Russia. No more threats to our sovereignty remains here, and we begin our more ambitious plans. The emergency powers will have to end, for the will of the people must be heard now. Next, the enemies to our east must fall. Russia will be whole again, and under the wise rule of his, his imperial majesty, political power, get an event, and slightly decrease coring times, which is a good thing. Now, I wish we could have, could have gotten these guys as a puppet, but oh well. Oh well. Are these cores of ours? Please tell me the cores. Oh, please tell me the cores. Oh, we got cores. Oh, I love cores. Alright, so I'm not sure who we're going to fight next. I'm going to assume it's the Euro, Euro League, but I have no idea. So, time go on and have a sip of coffee. No longer fortified position is over. The Deutsche Nation, early industrial robotics, cool. Oh, Austin's at war now. Oh, that's not good. They have a lot of resistance, what it seems like. We're doing that. Let's see. Do we do this? Flexible automation techniques, cap growth, efficiency output. That's pretty good. Retention cap growth. I'm going to go with more output right now. Wait, uh, that's a little. Oh, that's way too ahead. Way too ahead of time. My bad. Not choosing that one. Industry, uh, resource-wise. Ooh, we do get synthetic battery. What do we need? We do need a little bit of rubber. Mm. Resource-wise, more efficiency gain. Synthetic fuel. Ooh, we do get one. I guess we can try that. Why not? Sounds like a good idea. We probably lost quite a few guys in that war, so we're gonna train these guys up, which would be nice. But we do need some more explosives. Uh, what is this? Oh, uh, our sovereignty insured. RPG. I want to say that's explosives. It's hard to tell sometimes. It's a, I think it's just anti-tank, isn't it? I think it's just anti-tank and then artillery. Anti-tank, artillery, and planes. Oh, we actually have quite a few yaks. Let's see. How do we know when we have a deficit? Oh, right there. Yeah, we need some more of this. That'll be good. We need some more of that, which we're going to keep that on like that. Keep it up to four for now. We're doing really well with these tanks, and we're doing, with these yachts, we're actually doing pretty well as well, so we'll lower down to three for now. And some anti-air would be nice. Cool. Hope we get a new focus tree soon. The sovereignty of Western Russia, if you'd like to read this, go right ahead. With great power comes great responsibility. Vladimir would soon have to make hard choices, as he was unsure if he was ready for that. Excuse me. Revitalize stuff. Anything else here? Excuse me. Again. Move. Extra influence. Hmm. Seems like all we can do is stuff down here. Yep, that's all we can do. Uh, 
We do get infrastructure. Yeah, hmm. Cool. The sun sets on the SS. Makes sense. Scientific research. It's probably good just, just to choose all this stuff. To the national debt. It's only $145 million. That's all. I want more benefits. So they increase. Oh, you know what? I, I do want to help out the poverty stuff. The poverty stuff seems like it, it hurts us pretty badly, honestly. 50 to 80%. We need to get rid of that. It hurts our stability. It hurts us quite a bit with war support. Factory output. Yeah, that'd be good to get rid of. Because it's only 56. That's probably the best thing. Okay, we actually get a, quite a few things we can do here. The sovereignty reduces the administrative strain on our state. Ooh, I like that. Or Imperial Recovery Committee. I like that too. Reevaluate the armed forces and reestablishing contacts. Uh, well, let's do this one. Sovereignty. The absolute rule may have been suitable for the urgent, desperate conditions for all of our time as a mere statelet with pretensions of monarchy, but the Vyatka's meteoritic. I can't speak right now. I'm sorry. Meteoric rise to the mastery of Western Russia requires the government fit to rule an actual country. No longer can the Tsar rule by himself with laws levied solely by decree. One man cannot rule so many. Million. We have a unique chance to create the first legitimate Russian government since the Civil War. Though West Russia still needs to stabilize before we can probably impose a rule, this does not hamper the formation of a new cabinet to aid the Tsar in its work. Hopefully, these negotiations will prove quick and fruitful, bringing together the various factions within the government to produce a consensus that will carry us to greater things yet. Yes, good. I'm going to keep this closed for now since we probably don't need it. Alright. I really like this because I need rubber, but actually it doesn't give us rubber. Whoops. Less stability? I'm not about that, man. I can't do that. Loose factories, faster military construction speed, I get a military factory, it's not terrible. Preemptive strike, great. Naval support, or air support. We're probably going to go with air support. We don't really have that much of a need for marines, overwhelming firepower, air assault. I'm not sure we're actually going to be able to use air assault eventually, but we'll see what happens. Hmm. What do we want? I'm going to do worker training, so we get a bonus for industry. That's always nice. And a moderate increase for GDP. I kind of like that. Another... Great. We're, we are slowly running out of manpower, though, which I don't like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, are we suffering any sort of injuries here? Not bad so far. I would like... Oh, the sovereignty. If you would like to read this, go right ahead. Vladimir III read a report about the meeting later that evening, championing the ability of the Council to forego individual interests in favor of the Empire. S. Nami Bog. Hoggers. Cool. Congress of Vologda. Trump of the old ways. Victory of the cadets. Oh, good lord. What is that? Securing the realm. I like reduction of administrative strain. I really like that idea. Reign in the Okhrana. Liberal democracy. I'm not so sure if we want a liberal democracy, man. Hmm. <clears throat> Offers of amnesty. The Emperor's peace. Let's go with this one. The Imperial Recovery Committee. While the Tsar is a wise and powerful individual who has managed death of Prince somebody, Mongolia. Well, that's not good. Who has managed to navigate through the first stage of unification. It's probably best if we left the specific matters of planning, executing, and supervising the economic, academic, industrial recovery within the sovereignty to the experts. The Tsar has decreed that he will establish an Imperial Recovery Committee, an organization that will collect the brightest and most experienced academia in the land to come together and focus on a plan to reintroduce economic growth and ultimately prosperity into Western Russia and assuage the economic issues that we're currently experiencing following the unification of the West under the banner of the Romanovs. For if there is no functional industrial base, how will we prepare for the extension of our borders eastwards towards unification? Which is a good idea, a good thought. Keep that open. Communist coup in Finland. The north is red. Oh, no, no, no. Time to go back. Time to go back. Authoritarian socialism. Huh. Interesting. Military austerity. Oh, austerity. They kill their military? I guess it makes sense. I probably can't go to war with them soon-ish. So, so, they must have a lot of debt. A lot of debt. Actually, let's look at this. So, uh, income rate, 9.7. That's not bad. Minus 500. Yeah, that's not bad, yeah. Let's see. Mechanization. I want benefits. Moderately increases GDP. Not bad. Moderately increases GDP. 15% construction speed really won't help us that much. Now, that's like a lot of debt. That absolutely, though, increases uh, GDP, which I want more of. Slightly increases GDP. I don't like that. Let's go down here. I'm slowly making my way up, so construction, while well, I love you, we don't have that many factories really to use right now. Consumer goods take so much up. What takes the most of it? Oh, utilization. Oh my gosh, 50%. Utilization, where is that? 
substantial stuff. Oh, we have an overextended administration. That's part of it. Yeah. Let me get rid of that. So, the status of the economy, if you would like to read this, go right ahead. It's now, though, time we get back to work, of course. Economic recovery. Uh, following the reunification, the economy is finally showing signs of recovery and our GDP growth has slightly increased. Academic recovery. Public education. We begin to improve. Industrial recovery. I'm going to go with securing the realm to help reduce administ administrative strain. The Congress of Vologda completed. We can find finally focus on solving domestic issues. Paramount among them is a vast amount of territory that we have conquered in the past few years. While we're un now under the, we are the, now the undisputed masters of Western Russia, the harsh reality of the situation is that we are struggling to keep peace in a land that we are at least nominally governed. Between the rampant bandits and rabid ideologies or ideologues clinging to the faint hope that their resistance would be able to change the tides inevitably. Political, economic, and military action all used in conjunction. The Okhrana, our new administration, and the Imperial Army all working together. We have to be employed to ensure that we can secure our realm against the internal dissenters that threaten it. Good. 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 Three more... I'll, I'll take more divisions. I will welcome more divisions in. I just... In my own personal life, I always gotta keep an eye on debt, man. Like, I, I have no problem with debt, but that's because I keep an eye on things. Expenditures, cool. Revenue, not bad. Minus 500 million some. I don't mind spending a little money here and there. Actually, I spent way too much money the other day, but whatever. Uh, don't don't ask about that, what I spent on. Uh, well, actually, you can. Uh, moderately increases GDP. You know what? It's, this is all good stuff. So. Oh. Oh, Urgusk unifies the Russian Far East. Oh, my goodness. The reign of terror marches on. Oh, good lord. Uh, this is probably a good idea to keep lowering this. Um, it's fine, I guess. Anything else? No, we don't have enough political power for anything else. And no manpower, which really sucks. But whatever. Get more military factories for now. That's fine. State of the economy. Hmm. Oh, that went down even more. Hmm. Increase the cost by 5%, but use 10% more civilian goods. Securing the realm, good stuff. Oh. Another uh, division? Sure. You know what? Let's actually pull you out. We actually need to make more divisions that are mobile. Let's see. Frosty guys. Winter specialist, politically connected. Media personality. Armor. Yeah, I'll probably go with Adrian, just because we'll probably throw armor on him later on. And there. Cool. And carte block for this one. Replace police with secret security service. Ooh. Now it's a mistake. Or rain in the Okhrana. I'm thinking we're going to go with that, but let's do economic recovery, slowly but surely. Since the formation of the Imperial Recovery C Committee, we have seen steady economic growth as things stabilize following the end ooh, Burgundian bunkers. Following the end of the partisans and the restoration of the civilian rule following the Congress of Vologda. No longer are people scrounging for food, and no more cities are filled to the brim with destitute transient workers in one factory one day and another the next. The most important factors in the stabilization of an economy have been returned to the Russian people and our own rule, confidence and hope. While this start has allowed us briefly to see a spike in productivity, the committee has correctly asserted that this is only a baby step in the long road towards a functioning economy. A welcome respect to be sure, but only that. There's much work to be done, and then we'll do the Congress after this as well. Another division? Sweet. Uh, that's the case. I'll actually do that. Ooh, military construction two. Good. You're going to be under artillery attack. There you go. You're actually going to be under someone else. Mikhail... Oh! Antipin. Defense. Offensive. River and inflexible. I like them inflexible. Uh, I like organizer. I love logistics wizard, wizard. But you know what? If you're wearing that stuff, Field Marshal, if you're like an orthodox dude, glad to have you on. Uh, military factory construction speed. Sure. You guys train. I want to use you. Uh, we have enough army XP for this. Oh, Coast Guards. Archive of Samara, that's fine. Division Designer. I'm gonna duplicate this. Thanks. Cool. Well, we actually really did want to make quite a few divisions. Um, I don't know if we can really afford that, though. There you go. Um, there you go. Let's see what we can do about that. Tanks. I'm just gonna do what is tried and true in my mind. So, as much as I love using these guys, get more armor on this. This tw uh, how big are this two combat width? Is two combat width, huh? I'm gonna assume five and five is probably not bad. I don't know how much uh, how much piercing does this have? Just period ninety two. We're gonna need some more armor than that. Yeah. 
63. We're going to need more armor. Because we can pierce ourselves, and that's probably not a good thing. Do both. Just go and get both. We really need to spend more. Minus 313. Probably not good. Are you sure of this? Do you want me to pay off all my debt right now? What is my debt? 1.2 billion dollars. Woo! Economic recovery, great. Let's do Congress of Vologda. During the warlord era, Vologda had a reputation for peace and stability, a consequence of a military government firmly devoted to neutrality. The city is under our control now, but as it is a as fine a location as any to begin deliberating, owning owing to its distance from Vyatka and relative calm. Each faction will send delegates to make up of the Congress, and they will deliberate there until they have decided the ministers of the Tsar's cabinet. The delegates are expected to be long and arduous, with significant unrest between the moderate and conservative delegates. Regardless of what happens, the Congress of Vologda will make history. We are the only weeks away from the establishment of the first monarchist government in 40 years. Not even the worst deadlock uh, could keep us from this victory. Well, we'll see what happens. Military spending? I don't mind maybe lowering it just for now. It's only for four months. Olimar, Prime Minister, an aristocrat, and gentleman. And a sultan, huh? That's cool. Military spending. Decrease the military budget for a little bit. I mean, hmm. More division training time. Honestly, hope we won't go to war hopefully within the next four months. I could be seriously wrong. But let's slash it down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, you know. It's just a little bit. It's not much. And it's not going to hurt our, uh, too much of us except factory output, which really sucks. Nagasaki Accord sign, bringing peace to Vietnam. Fresh air at last. Cool. And we should be building up more civilian factories now, right? Yes. Good, good, good. And we got... Oh, wait. Why are, they, are the roads destroyed here? Why are they destroyed roads? Let's invest in scientific research. Less stability. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 200 million. 100 million. Ah, Congress. Oh my gosh, what the heck is this? Polling begins. Holy smokes. Oh, what did I choose? Oh, no, no, oh, no. Very strong, exceptional. Onega? Oh my goodness, Central Russia. Holy crud. Who do I choose? Campaign? Ah, uh, well, I'm gonna choose all Russian national victory begins, VNS. Well... Who are the parties? So we have ROVS, NTS, which will win anyways. Actually, he leads everything. Well, not everything, I guess. Oh, except fascist group. Not even National Socialism. Obviously not Libertarian Socialism, Liberal Democracy. I kind of go with the NTS or the ROVS. The KD. Who's a KD? KD. Uh, KD would be is a Liberal Democracy. Uh. KD becomes ruling party. That seems okay. That seems very interesting, though. Begin the reforms. And there's probably an empire of equals. Eh, I don't want, really want to go that way. We have the VNS or the NTS. Wait, what's VNS? V, 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 v. Oh, VNS is conservative democracy. The old ways triumph. Uh, daily political power is not bad. Ensure stability, political reforms. Conservative democracy or the brightest hour knocks. I kind of want to go with the brightest hour knocks. So let's go with National Union of Solidarity Victorious, NTS. Let's see what happens with that. But I would have no idea. Let's do carte blanche for Smelslovsk. I can't speak Russian. Boris S., Chief of the Okhran, has proven to be an invaluable asset to us up to this point. Under his command, the secret police has weeded out countless dissenting individuals, whether they were organized partisans, or labor organizers, or even discontented peasants. With such an indispensable ally, it may be the best idea for us to invest all of our funds and trust into S and his secret police so that we can ensure that they would leave or have all the resources that they need to secure our rule in the West and beyond. Sure, it may pose some risks in alienating a populace unfamiliar to the rule of the Tsar and possibly any potential negotiations that we could enter into with, with the rebels, but on the other hand, stability. Right? Stability for the nation. Stability. So the campaign here, huh? Suppress minority voting. Voting. Um. If we lose, does it really matter? I mean, I don't really care who wins too much. VNS. I think we chose VNS to want to win, right? Overpowering NTS. Overpowering NTS moderate. NTS weak. They're overpowering there. Uh, we're probably not going to win with the end. These guys, that's okay. 
giving a random small uh, support. Uh, Arctic. Well, where are we strongest? Weak. We're pretty weak everywhere. Significance. 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 It seems like we could probably do pretty well. Oh, we're VNS. Exceptional. So it's either this one, that one, or that one. Let's see, VNS is overpowerful. Maybe Transvolga. The Transvolga or Central Russia. Yeah, Central Russia. Transvolga. So we're campaigning. I really don't want to campaign, but it is what it is. Transvolga is next. Suppress minority voting. Sounds like a great thing. Romania sides with Italy. Italian money won the day for now. Oh, and Rex Commissariat Austin is here again. Well, Franz, hello. There's only unity pact. Emperor Baldai abdicates. Communist Party sweeps into power. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. Okay, then. I wish Italy could reform their own little faction. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, what's this? Hold on. Oh, God. The game's lagging a little bit. And... What is this? Southern Ural United Defense League. So if one person attacks them, they all die. Cool. So Ural Military District. Russia is really divided. Holy crap. Cool. Uh, can't do anything else here yet. Polling updated. Oh, every own state? Yes. Scientific research. Uh, sure, why not? Polling, polling, polling. Still good, relatively here. Not. Yeah, it's, 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 it's such a mess. Carte Blanc, an honest mistake. If you would like to read this, go right ahead. An honest mistake, surely. Cool, next up. The partisan problem. The problem with partisans. Root them out. Ooh. The wit currency reform. Lowering interest rates will encourage our people to spend more. Industrial societal improvement will begin to increase. There's nothing to simulate, stimulate a wounded person like a massive shot of adrenaline to the veins. Similarly, a massive infusion of foreign capital into an economy goes leaps and bounds for establishing a pattern of growth and stability. It's no secret that the charismatic Vladimir III has a number of contacts abroad. And the Imperial Recovery Committee has already begun to make feelers in the directions on the top reaching out to a number of foreign or neighboring and foreign powers for investment into the sovereignty. With foreign capital, we can build government-sponsored industries and factories that will guarantee jobs as well as ensure that the rural areas have enough food and supplies to survive the harsh winters by extension increasing their productivity in the months where they can work. Finally, inviting foreign capital will go a long way towards foreign recognition of a regime, a key part in our ultimate reunification. Excuse me. Reunification. Very good. It seems like things are going okay. Not great, but okay for now. Oh, we completed the campaign. Good. We don't have enough political power now. Whoops. Threns of Volga's next. Oh, we're doing really well in the Euro region. Good. KD's. Oh. They're doing stuff down there too. Air land strikes. Very cool. Well, honestly, with this the rest of this land auction, vertical envelopment, I can't really do much else, but we might as well finish it, right? Might as well finish it up. Finish it up. Angola is having problems. That's okay. Overpowering. So Trans Volga looks pretty good to do, or Central Russia. Trans Volga or Central Russia. Um, I see more green. And this one, then, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Transvolga it is. Even though we'll do Central Russia next. Cool. Money-wise, how are we looking? Well, let's see. Annual deficit. Oh, God, we have a big old annual deficit. I can't spend less. Civilian spending. More austerity. Stability goes down by 10%. I don't really want to do that. Ooh. I, I hate that. I hate that so much. Total GDP is 50 million. I know we're probably okay. Civilian spending has gone up. Proportional GDP makes sense. Other expenditures, total expenditures, annual revenues. We're spending quite a bit. But annual G GDP growth is 6.2%. Annual debt interest is 12%. Hmm. Pulling updated, cool. And invite foreign capital. That's good. Revalue with armed services. We'll do that later on. And let's do academic recovery. Yeah, that's probably good to do as well. As the realities of our economic reforms begin to set in, and the markets of our realms are beginning to return to a degree of normalcy, we can finally begin to focus on the future of our nation's youth, education. The years of military destruction and then the systematic bombing of, by the Germans made our even most rudimentary organized education for our youth all but impossible. Crippling degrees of illiteracy, even among teens and young adults, plague our workforce and our soldiers, and this is nothing to say about the youngest of our nation. The Tsar has decreed no more. When the administration went to reform the education system, they found that it was virtually non-existent. While some may view this as an issue, in reality, it's a blessing. They've been given the chance to build an education program from the ground up, stopping at nothing to ensure that the youth of our nation will represent our future of the f represent our vision of the future. And this begins helping them out as well. Oh boy, what's going on? Oh, the campaign about to end there. That's fine. That's fine. I don't know. I, I really don't care. Either party is fine with me. 
I really don't care that much. But let's take a look at this. So, infantry, anti-tank weapons. How much piercing do they have? 100. Oh, shnikes. RPG-2s, which we should really have. So once, oh, my God. Yeah, I I'm trying to make armor, but uh, that armor isn't going to withstand up to anti-tank stuff. We got to get more armor on. 5%. We got to get down here. We'll focus more heavily on tanks next. Uh, use all the liquid reserves. De de increase GDP. Now, is it ever really worth... It might be worth it to pay off national debt. I'm thinking I might do that. I'm thinking about it. I'm really thinking about it. Annual debt. We want high liquid reserves. Our national debt, though. We have more debt than liquid reserves. Which I don't like. I don't want to hurt this either. And I don't want to spend more. Increase cost by 10%. No. Ooh, you replace 50% utilization with 40%. Ooh, we get less. Hmm. Cool. Military factory. Cool. Good stuff. That's way too ahead of time. We can't really do this stuff. Factory repair speed cap growth base. Max factories in a state could be pretty useful. But I'm going to go ahead and get down here maybe. T64. Yeah, I don't want to produce outdated garbage stuff. Academic recovery is good stuff. And partisan reforms. Partisan industrial recovery, infrastructure, civilian factories would be good. Reopening universities. Yeah, let's get more political power and research speed. So, during the times of crisis, people tend to focus on survival more than personal enrichment. Formerly great institutions of learning were among the biggest victims of the collapse in the order of West Russia. Where thousands of students once learned literature, art, science, and engineering, there's not only ignorance and stagnation. An entire generation of thinkers was robbed of the chance to form. By God's grace, Tsar Vladimir, oh, look at that, has brought peace to the region after many years of turmoil, and the acquisition of knowledge can once again progress. West Russia's universities will soon be open and filled with students. The antidote to years of intellectual decay is here, and soon, not soon enough. Very much not soon enough. So we're doing pretty well here. We're doing pretty well here. We probably need it in up here or here. I'm going to go with Central Russia next. We could suppress minorities, which is always fun to do, but, you know, whatever. I love suppressing minorities. But what if I'm a minority myself? Do I suppress myself? Maybe. Alright, so howitzers, artillery is looking better. Anti-tank stuff is looking not bad. Is this IFVs and this is APCs? Hmm, I might use APCs actually. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Cool. Oh, planes in reserve. Cool. Oh, yeah. Let's make sure you guys are. You're on the group. That's good. 44%. Good, good, good. World War II fighters. I oh, have no manpower. That's right. Another division. Great. I love having divisions. Campaigning. We gotta wait till that stuff ends. Military austerity. Okay, cool. So it's gonna cost us even more now, probably. Isn't it? Boom. 12%. Yeah. I don't like that. So, would it help if I just continued to build a lot of civilian factories? It might. Maybe. Better industrial expertise. Great! More production, efficiency, retention, cap growth. Love it. Excellent. Reopen the universities and then the Kazan Science Academy. The original Russian Academy of Science was formed in the 18th century by Peter the Great, an operative uh, until up until the collapse of the Soviet Union, was a magnificent school responsible for breakthroughs in mathematics, history, engineering, now deeper than Rakhsk Commissariat at Muscovine, is totally inaccessible to the Russian people. We need scientific acumen more than ever. In response to this pressing situation, the Tsars widely decided to build a new academy, this time located in Kazan. With luck, patience, and hard work, the advancements made there will propel us into modernity and prove to the world that Russia is no longer the most backwards part of Europe. Hopefully. Hopefully. Decrease this. Yeah, you might as well. Why not? We can't even do anything here yet, so... Uh, what do we have? Campaigning, campaigning, campaigning. Well, we'll get our stuff done right before the campaign ends. Polls updated. Cool. Looking very weak in some areas. Very weak. Uh, that's not looking great. So hopefully we can fix this up right before everyone goes to elections. Election results. The votes are in. Give it a day first, maybe. Do we need to give it a day? now? Nah. Yeah, I'll do that before they do this. The votes are in. The Solidarists are victorious. Oh, we shall lead Russia to glory. Huh. Okay. Let's go Solidarists. Which one are those? Despotism, reopen universities. Good. Well. Oh, well. I don't even know what was... Oh, election polling. Oh, the Russian elections. All in mass victory three in total. Cool. NTS. Victory, huh. Final results. NTS won, the VNS won there, and the KD, well, 
What are the ultimate losers? Oh, maybe... I think we wanted VNS, didn't we? Oh, oh well. VNS... NTS 1. Hmm. I, I'm, I'm not upset. I don't really care too much. They all seem like good options. They all, all have good things about them. I'm gonna do this again. Oh, Angola is having problems. I want less debt. Annual deficit, that's looking a little better. Uh, liquid reserves, almost 5 billion. National debt. Okay, that's not bad then. Happy 1967, though. Happy 1967. Ooh, what can we do? Ah, yes, Kazan. Oh, wait, we can campaign again? Why can we campaign again? I think I think the elections are over, aren't they? And now we have to choose that one group that won. Oh, Bart, Albert Knox. So, at long last, reaction prevails in West Russia. The staunch conservative National Union of Solidarists, led by uh, Alexander S., has come out on top after weeks of deliberating in Volodya. Not easing the anxiety of those who fear that the unbridled right could endanger democracy. The Solidarists declare that they desire the maintenance of civil liberties and de democratic values, but unlike their opponents, profess a desire for an increased role of Christianity in public life and the cooperation of all social classes in the name of the Russian people. S's task now is to ease the skepticism of the opposition and begin remodeling Russia in the Solidarist ideal. The Tsar himself, a faithful man, is likely to afford the Solidarist his support. But the question of whether the Russian people are ready to accept such a drastic return to tradition remains. We'll see what happens. If this ends in a bloody raid firefest, AK 47s. Oh my gosh, now you got me interested. We'll see what happens. I, I don't know. But this is fun. This is actually a lot of fun. A lot more a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Russia is a great place to. Well, maybe Russia isn't a great place to be, but I, I enjoy it. $15 million for more war support and weekly stability. Uh, just for a little bit of cash? That's fine with me. That's totally fine. What do you have? Oh, camp... Oh, campaigns. Pulling up... Oh, is the polling not done? I thought we already won. Polling... Okay, cool. Polling is hidden. Ah, uh, ooh, good. Don't have to worry about that stuff then. Now we can focus on doing what is right. Invest in construction. We're gonna wait. I don't want to spend more money yet. Some place to declare war on the Congo. Looks probably like Africa. Fine with me. What's going on? To oh my goodness. Popular Republic. If it's so popular, why is it fighting someone else? Oh, resource extraction techniques. Very cool. I'm feeling pretty good about this. This is pretty nice. Resource efficiency gain? Sure. We get maybe maybe another rubber. Not bad. Uh, invest in construction. Yeah, we got these three. <sighs> hey, brightest hour knocks. Oh, what happened here? Anything happened? Russian elections. No one cares. Right now, encourage political thought. The popularity of radical ideologies shall decrease. So now we are NTS. Radical ideologies go down. We get more political power for a little while, actually, and more stability. I kind of like that one. Expand the state welfare programs. I don't like that. I really don't. So we're going to not do that yet. We'll see what happens. For the good cause. Uh, let's unlock political reform. So Russia's morals have deteriorated over the last few years. A natural result of the social state and a long and harsh war. The traditional values are in tatters and the old faith has been forgotten. And petty hatreds of class prevent patriotic people from seeing eye to eye. The Solidarists need to correct all of these flaws if there is any hope to cobbling the Russian nation back together and set it on a proper course. Strength and vitality are necessary in any government hopes to put the fear of God back into Russia, and the time has now begun drastic reforms. If the liberals complain, remind them just who has earned the support of the Tsar and the Russian people. Ah, recent blind factory is great. Mm -hmm. Can we get even more fuel from refineries? Fuel gain. Oh, it actually goes down, huh? Build, oh, actually, don't build that building there. Build, we're going to build quite a few. We want to build, build, build a massive amount of factories. Ooh, up there too. Even though it's probably too late to really do too much. Actually, you know what? We'll get another military factory in there as well, because why not? We'll throw them right there. Actually, you know, right there. There you go. Hidden, hiding election results. Everyone's state. Results are no longer in the decisions here. We could invest in construction, but we're going to wait. Vertical envelopment. Nice. Man, we can research stuff so quickly now. I love it. I love it. I, I'm going to keep this tab open all the time just because I, I, I have to know these numbers. Alright, so deficit is still going up just a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, the GDP is 51, annual growth is 6.2. Liquid reserves, I really want to pay off the national debt. Our liquid reserves are 19... That's not bad, 19 billion? 
I'm gonna see what happens. Let's see, 12%, 6.2%. We basically didn't lose that much. That's awesome. For the good of the cause. Cool. And temporary dictatorship. Reduces administrative strain. I have to do that one. The first step of reigning in Russia's chaos is creating a sense of order and stability within the Tsar's government. Democracy will be lost to demagoguery, populism, and God forbid socialism without the firm hand of a benevolent ru ruler. The Tsar is well suited for the task, but he cannot do it alone. The Solidarists will have to step in in order to provide more effective implementation into the program. Prime Minister S. has drawn a plan to grant himself increased emergency powers in this period of instability. The All-Russian Union and cadets may shout of creeping fascism and authoritarianism, but they lack a proper understanding of the great problems Russia faces. Good. And now, since we have no debt, I feel like spending all sorts of money. Uh, let's do that one first. Restrict public... Mm, meetings. More stability. State-controlled press. Vlad Emperor. Interesting. State-controlled press. More daily pickle power. Ideology. Drift defense. Not bad ideas, if I do say so myself. Regional development is going up, which is awesome. Some more divisions. Thank you. Thank you. Please train if you need it. Please train. When can I go to war with someone else? That's probably my question. Let's see. I definitely don't want to hurt civilian budget. Construction. I might actually increase construction budget. More utilization. How many factories we got? You know what? I'm going to increase it. Because money-wise... Construction is probably the lowest out of everything here. I don't mind always decreasing the military budget for now. And it would... That's a lot. Liquid reserves are not bad. If I incre if I do this, does it increase the GDP? I don't know. Probably not. Not really. Doesn't really hurt us that much. Okay, now the annual deficit is back up to 580 m million. That's not bad. 580 million. Temporary dictatorship? So be it. The Imperial Constitution? A new constitution and reduces administrative drain. The Congress of Vologda, the most significant political conference in Russia for decades, has come to a close. Now that the cabinet has formed, the government has decided, and a political faction has gained power and decided the direction of the nation, it is time to embark on the next task of the young kingdom, creating a constitution. This is not a plan that can be taken lightly. The constitution of the new Russian government will be def will be defining an entire generation of politics. The eyes of all the people of West Russia are on the assembled delegates in Vologda, and our government has a unique chance to produce the founding document of the modern Russian era of monarchism. Yay! Close that, we don't need that for now. Reunification of Russia. Don't really need that right now. Expansive. Ooh, advanced advanced developmental subsidies. Oh, moderately increases GDP. More infrastructure. It's not bad. Hiring foreign instructors. I like that a lot. Army professionalism goes up as well, but let's uh, let's do some stuff here. I love more stability, but this gives us political power. So let's do that one. State control plus? I think so. I think so. Looking pretty good, except for these planes. These planes are doing okay. It's hard to tell which one's which. Which one is a fighter, which one's close air support? Oh, we still need more high explosives. Mm -hmm. This is not bad. Let's go, we can lower it to probably to eight. That'd be, probably be fine, good. Spread, spread around the wealth. Ooh, your league has defeated NKVD. Okay, cool. Keep it up, guys. Keep killing each other. We like it. Ah, the Imperial Conference. Beautiful. Liquid reserves, only at 73 billion. Uh, partisan problem? Let's do the white currency reform. Or the wit. An eponymous white currency reform, or wit currency reform, named after the council minister and member of the Imperial Recovery Committee who suggested it, is a reform centered around the reintroduction of a standardized currency around the in the areas where the sovereignty rules. Currently, a dozen different currencies exist in our territory, from the Reichsmark to the crude copper-based coins. In the most destitute areas, people have resorted to a barter-based economy. None of this will do for our sovereignty, which requires a standard, standardized currency to stabilize the economy and make transactions much simpler. This currency would be also ensure that prices will be stable for everyone. Some of the more caricature-like scenes from the markets show complex transactions between vendor and buyer, where multiple complex mathematical equations must be done to calculate the value of an item originally sold for rubles in smuggled USD. This is the exact sort of scenario we want to prevent. Yes. Um, I love lowering my military budget. I don't know why. It just, like, it hurts us. But I like seeing less, like, spending here. I, I have a problem. I know. I have a problem. Whatever. As long as you understand that you have a problem, that's okay. Ooh. And we'll probably do restrict public meetings next. Yeah. Returning expatriates. I mean, we could use manpower right now. We really could. So we basically get 5,000 manpower in the end. And we do get some stability, which isn't bad. But let's do this. Restrict public meetings first. Oh, oh, we have to wait for the other one. Uh, 
fine. Get some more stability. Whatever. Get a little bit more manpower because we can actually really use it. Liquid reserves. National debt. 30. I only have 147 billion. Come on, man. Cool. Organization and just recovery. Let's go do that one. So, between the terror bombings and endless clashes between warlords, it's a small miracle that Russian industry survived at all until now. While it's recovered somewhat since the devastation of the 1950s, development is not what it once was, and further down still what it could be will be needed to one day reclaim our homeland. The Tsar will put serious efforts in reconstructing West Russia's factories and industrial centers, both to improve the people's dismal living conditions and ensure that the sovereignty will be able to stand proudly against its enemies. The end of our backwardness is at hand, and the inauguration of West Russia is a modern, developed nation soon to come. Great. Yeah, I hate debt. I hate debt. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'll say it for the rest of my life. I hate debt. Ooh. Best in construction. Yeah, good. State control press. I like it. I like it a lot. And we actually have a okay army size, too. We get about 500 people a month. That's not bad. We got a little more there. Nice. Very nice. And we can only get 1.87 political power a day. God dang, that's a lot. Let's just restrict public meetings so we get some more stability as well. I love it. Ooh, expand the welfare state. Army professionalism. We gotta do that one again. Get more army XP. Uh, professional army is at 115. This one's at 13. This one's at 68. Okay. This one is at 102. This one is at 50. 127, 98. Cool. Industrial recovery. Great. Now, we can probably wait here. Let's get some more civilian factories first. With industrial recovery underway, we can move our attention to civilian infrastructure, which has likewise not held up well over the past two decades. Unavoidable disruptions to everyday life has contributed to the de deterioration of our schools and hospitals. Businesses have likewise been afraid to invest in adventures that could go up in flames at any moment. The chief concern of our recovery committee should be to return to a sense of normalcy to civilian lives. Strategic spending on education, medicine, business subsidies, and a wide variety of other areas of the civilian sector could go a long way in creating a healthy, prosperous nation whose citizens have full access to amenities. That would be a great thing. I always hurt my military. I don't know why. I just... I love the military, but man, things cost money. Great. Outdated. Yes, please. And actually, the next one would give us how much armor? Quite a good amount of armor, but we still need more. I'm just going to keep increasing the armor levels to see if we can make these guys any better for tanks. Armor is still only 73.9. That's pretty bad. Uh, organization, though, is okay. 70 military, 70 factories in general is not bad. But it's been quite a while since we've gone to war. The next war was going, that's going to happen is probably going to be a massive war between us and these guys over there. Because we have four research slots. But that's awesome. That's really awesome. And we're done with our land doctrine. Great, great. Uh, AKs. Uh, yes, please. Let's get some more anti-piercing. It might not even be worth trying to get tanks or using them at all. Enemy here. Is that what is that? Strella. Oh. Global stats, that's enemy air support, more defense, that seems kind of useful, actually. Grab that, though, because that helps our, our guys out immediately. Anything outdated? Yes. Oh, God, I love AK-47s, I love having one. But I didn't say I own one, or two. Whatever. Um, Let's see, army professionalism, probably is the most important one. Poverty, oh, I really want to about the poverty rate. Oh, moderately increases GDP. I, I kind of want roads, I kind of want roads. First, though, rebuilding the civilian sector, connecting our realm. Let's reorganize the Ministry of Finance. Medium taxation. Oh, we have low taxation. Ooh, we actually lose stuff. Get more income, though. The Ministry of Finance was originally established in the darkest days of our existence. Created out of a necessity, it was a messy, disorganized, and most importantly, decentralized to account for the realities of the terror bombings and the fact that the Star and his administration was besieged on all sides by hostile powers. Now, while the Ministry is still in operation, the truth is that its methods and organization are archaic. Um, useless to what we need right now. Thus, we need to begin a complete, top-to-bottom reorganization of the Ministry of Finance, sacking those who are unnecessary and centralizing apparatus for the economic management of the sovereignty. Without an effective and centralized Ministry of Finance, there would be no possible way to implement a coherent economic plan. So I really don't like hurting my output. I really don't. But it seems like it's a necessary thing. Just like restricting public meetings. Yes. Yes. Give me that infrastructure. Two building slots. Take on quite a bit more debt, but that's okay for now. Because national debt, a annual debt interest, is a probably bad idea. But we're at half a trillion dollars in liquid reserves. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Industry is at 67, so we can't do stuff down here. Resource efficiency gain? Sure, why not? Still, only get one. We need more rubber, of course, but that's okay. Over here, let's see. Uh, we have no manpower still, of course. Why would we? I know this video's gone on long, but these videos are going to be pretty long in general just because 
I want to get through as much as possible. I don't want to have like a super long campaign, so just let y'all know. Liquid reserves to invest. Should I invest? You know what? I could invest uh, my liquid reserves. I have over a trillion dollars. More GDP. I don't know. This is a this is a test run campaign for the entire game, so let's see what happens. So we're right now, almost fifty three billion dollars. Holy crap! Six hundred forty billion. Oh, I just spent all my liquid reserves. That's probably not a good thing. <laughs> Oh well, what happened happened. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, principles of solidaritism. Oh, oh, I could have chosen. Oh, I could have chosen that one. Austerity programs would have been good. Economic liberalization probably would have been better. But do principles of solidaritism. Uh, the solidaritists have been in control of our nation since the victory at the Congress of Bologna. Supporting a unique economic plan revolving around corporatism, the solidaritists are finally in a position to begin introducing the economic reforms in an attempt to revitalize the economy. The solidarist reforms, which revolve around the introduction of a corporatist system, that being the organization of society around various interest groups and economic sectors, have been somewhat controversial among some of the most solidarist, most vehement opponents. However, the ever dynamic S has already begun to prepare the Ministry of Finance and other necessary apparatuses of the state for the adaptation to the system. Is what we gotta do, son. I don't know. War is hell. Currently, our annual income is France sides with Germany. So what? The French state has decided to remain with the pact. Wow, that is interesting. Unit. Oh wait, hold on. France and Brittany, the Republic. Burgundy is surrounded by Unity Pact members, except for Switzerland, of course. And now debt's going to go back up, and we have no liquid reserves. That was probably a bad thing for me to do. But our annual debt, that's not bad. But that's uh, that's a lot of GDP, right? $640 billion is probably pretty good. Our income is going to be 9.7%. So, our look, we already have $280 million, only million, in terms of liquid reserves. So now we got to probably spend less so we can make more income. That's probably what we're going to have to do. Our foreign instructors, yes. Immediately that one, always. Cool. Principles of Solidaritism. Uh, miracles on the... Oh, God. Ooh. Our empire is prospering again, so despite the plotting pace of our reforms as a result of our opposition, with no small effort, the reforms that we have implemented have begun to take effect and are clearly working. Economic recovery, something international experts refer to as laughable in Western Russia many years ago, has begun to spread all throughout the west of Russia, from the frozen wastes surrounding Akangalsk to the city of Samura, situated on the Volga. Truly, with no shortage of assistance from local bureaucrats and administrators, as well as no small effort from our grandest statesmen, the sovereignty is pulling itself and the people who live within it, kicking and screaming into the modern world. A state complete with a functional economy, without the Tsar and his long-suffering, ever-loyal servants. How would have this been possible? Hmm. Pay off national... Ooh, we have national debt. I'm going to immediately pay it off. We have no liquid reserves, basically, but that's okay. Death of an Emperor, Aizen Goro Puyi. Oh, Puyi is dead? Oh, no. But regardless, this video, I think, has gone on long enough. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like. If you think I did bad things to my economy, let me know as well. Uh, if you enjoyed it, regardless, check out my Discord server in the link. The description is... The link is in the description below. If I could speak, that'd be great. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a great rest of your day.